Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Hardcore and we got a special case today. We're going back to the Sherwood Country Club for the final round of the tournament. But this time I wanted to answer a question during this tournament since it's just four rounds of the same of the same course. I wanted to find out just how low the sco score goes. Previously we have been able to reach a negative 90 something, but I wanted to know, does it reach negative 99? Or does it go further below, further below 99? So I spent the next uh, several hours resetting and trying each round to get the lowest score possible to get below 99. A surefire way of doing that is getting to uh, 25 under every single round. So I start off this round at minus 75. Which means I'm on track to go to 100. So if I play exactly the same as the other three days, I'll be able to get minus 100. And we'll find out if it is able to actually go to, go below 99. Which means if I can go below that, that means I can go even further than that. Let's see if I can go to something like minus 110. And that's something I'd probably try in the future after I've uh, gotten all the other stuff maybe finish the game because it took pretty much all day to do this and it was not easy at all there's a lot of planning that has to go inside this and even then I'm not even at max stats for a lot of this stuff so it's not as easy as I would like, to, like it to be or well or as a concise as I want it to be or perfect but I know I can go deeper and that's the plan with that now on to the second hole we've already been at Sherwood before it's a wonderful course to be and it's also tiger proofed as well it's amazing enough that we also still went such a did such a challenge on a tiger proofed course but it's classified as easy so it's not going to be anything too, you know, exorbitantly difficult. It also goes to show just how much uh, stat increases make of a difference. Like, I'm not even at max and I'm able to hit so consistently and get eagles like nobody's business. I've yet to get a double eagle, but that could soon change. Since after this match, after this, well, this after this tournament ended, I went and upgraded some things. So we'll see that on in, uh, in later in the series. Amazingly enough, I don't think I used all of my tiger vision uh, for the during the entire tournament. I just used it on holes that I think that I know would have a uh, very picky amounts of trouble, like like this one on the second where I'm like 40, 60 feet away from the, from the hole and I'm not losing my eagle because I, I cannot get um, below any, anything below par you know, anything above par at all or pars in general to accomplish this task Wonderful drive there, Greg. That'll be on. Oh, that would have been a hole in one, too. But speaking of hole in ones, the only way to really improve this score is the is to eagle a par three, eagle every single one of them, because I think there's like a four or five par threes on Sherwood. I think so. One. Mm. Yeah, there's five par threes on here. So that means I'd have to, so that would take me to about a uh, 105 under. That's the lowest score possible you could get. 
because on the par fives you can't get most of these drives in a you can't get them in two strokes for a double eagle because most of them aren't designed that way they're probably set up because of that so you can prevent so they're double eagle prevented but I'm sure there's a way to get the uh, double eagle to happen there's probably some fancy stuff you could do with the uh, hooks and slices but when you play on a digital controller for an anal made for and this is an analog game it's just not gonna work every putt though on this course was a uh, was not so much of a fight because all of the fairway greens and speed fairway and green speeds were at medium so they allowed me to uh, not have to push so hard against everything and over and like overcompensate because I'm thinking you know we're, we're playing on a rougher on a rougher surface so I need to have more force to overcome it thankfully that wasn't the case and it, and it came out and we came out on top with it It also goes to show that uh, practice makes perfect on, perfect on these. I can feel myself getting better and better. I mean, I've gotten so good that I've been able to actually get a minus 100 on the course. And by the way, this is uh, probably not going to be the last time we get such a low score either. After I made such upgrades with the uh, money that I got from this tournament, all the stats are pretty much at 100%. So maybe in the near future, probably not so near. Since that we have all our stats up after this tournament, it's we're probably gonna start taking on the uh, challenges for for all the other people, and that'll be interesting to do. Because uh, th what I want to do is end this on Tiger Woods. So now that uh, now that I have all the stats that I want where I want them to be, we're gonna go on an elimination streak and try to complete as many of the uh, challenges after the after this sort of stuff. There'll be a few more tournaments I'll do, but then I'll be able to take it up to the uh, what's it called? I'll be able to, because I want to finish the PGA Tour, and I want to finish the, uh, oh, that's nice, that's a good bounce over there on the second half of the fairway, finish the PGA Tour and finish, and finish the game fight, Fighting Tiger, because it's Tiger Woods PGA Tour after all, not fighting him and not winning is just a disgrace. We had come so far just to lose. I think I got it though. Well, I would say I know I got it now. Because I'm hitting it minus... I'm hitting 100 under. And at 100 under, I've shot so consistently. I planned as much as I could. I really feel like I can go take them on now and I'm, I'm worthy of the challenge. Because I'm done breaking my back on the tour. Well, not so much on the tour. I'm ready to go take on... I'm ready to go take on the Masters. Now I find, find it kind of odd though, like... They probably couldn't get the licensing for Augusta National Golf Course. And that's really difficult. Because this is probably one of those times where I'd actually like to go play on that because that's a really nice course. It's a, it's a wonderful country club set in a great area. The winds are fair and everything's real nice for sure. And, that, and they always keep their greens real fast. Having nice like soft carpet greens, that's a, that's a very old time thing. They, have, they manage to keep it nice and challenging with their hard rough, uh, not hard, yeah, but they're hard ground and all that sort of stuff. Very good. 
there, there's a game out there with a. It, it's some Japanese exclusive game for like, you can actually go play on the Augusta National Course. Like I think it's just called Augusta National, for the Super Nintendo. To either the Super Nintendo or the Saturn. Even the Genesis, maybe. Regardless of that, it's uh, it's obviously a golf sim game, limited by the technology of the time. But it plays fairly well. That's a that was a, that's a scrapped that's a lost footage one for sure, because I played that and I did so poorly like on Pebble Beach Golf Links. I put it up anyways. I won't I won't put that one up though. That was. I was so poor and it didn't work correctly. That could have been a hole in one. Greg really should have put some more topspin on that. Drive it forward because it's going uphill. It would have lost a lot of speed anyways. solid birdie finish to put us 86 under and then halfway of course it's gonna be you know we've been here before it's not too hard of a course in fact it's, it's quite easy which is probably why I got a, a hundred under on it like a harder course usually ends up having more much has many more dog legs and many more chances to fail. Like here, it's just you know, I'm dry. I'm do it's a line drive. Slices off to the side, and then I'm there in two. Birdie for three. I mean, if I really wanted to, I could probably try to do stuff like chip in for some sort of like crazy some crazy distances. But I don't think I'm ready for that sort of risk yet, because I, I haven't even practiced doing something like that. Because you can't be very risk averse if you're trying to go for a, a hundred under. You have to take a degree of risk. Like play really close to trees and try to shoot it through stuff. Because if you don't, you'll never get some of these greens in the amount that they want. Or the amount that you specifically want to get 100 under. Like this hole's a very good example. We've got a we've got a bit of a it's calm, but there's one at one point there's a nice headwind on one of the rounds. And if there's a headwind at any point on some of these things off the line off of the main of the original drive, you're not gonna make the green in one. Getting on the green in one is uh, probably one of the most important things you can do to score incredibly low. Like with this, this is this is the yeah, it's 17, 17 and a half feet long. That's a that's a tiger vision right there. I won't even bother trying to look for that one. Because it's so far away and I He's like, I know I'm very far away and I'm going uphill, I'm going to need a serious amount of power, but I'm not calculating that and messing it up and going for another reset of the day. That's what they're there for and you use them. Now here's that really good 11th hole where you messed up and got a triple bogey on. It just goes to show that how important your initial drive is. And when you mess that up, I'm like, oh no, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna dick around and not do well. I'm just gonna get a triple bogey and totally ruin my day. That sits with me because even when it, that wasn't going for an attempt at, at for such an astronomically low score, that's still really bad. It's a triple bogey.
There's a four mile an hour left to right wind. Really hoping that I can just you know, nail it right there and get it at least as close to the pin as possible. Because that's a pretty good distance to nail for four miles an hour. I probably would have gone farther, but that's that's really good. That's five feet. It's a simple putt. Because I know there's um in the tournament after this, they have it, it's a uh, well it's it's called the. Uh, Oh, what is it called? It's like it's called like the Lighthouse Classic or something. And you go to these places that have lighthouses on them. One of the courses is specifically the uh, Greek Isles. That's a place we uh, will go to soon. That's a very tough course. It demands a lot just even to get their par fives, and it's it's quite challenging. There's a few courses that we actually haven't been to yet, which is uh, which is sad because I've been to those in, the, in practice and they're very and they're quite fun to go to. Maybe one day I'll go for like a low score challenge, maybe even a 100 under challenge or something. But that's for another day, because you know. You go you, you do this one once, and then it's like you think, I'm, I'm gonna go take on the world now. I'm gonna go do every single one of these at, hun at minus 100. Nah, that's too tiresome. Make me stress out as, as I'll get out. Because not only do I have to uh, do all that, I have to do other stuff at the house too. It tires the shit out of me. This is a really good hole for a power control too. I've said that before, but I can't, I cannot stress power control enough. Because what I wanna do here is get an eagle on this par five. And I've gotta skate between the uh, two iron and the three wood. One, ha one will have more than enough power to get me there, but I've gotta use it in a certain way like this. I just, I just had to hit barely before it and skip it across the rough and onto the green because chipping from there is a, it's kind of tough. It's, it's a medium speed green, so it's, you have a chance for it to roll, but I don't, I don't see that very, I don't see that happening anytime soon. But I took the risk and it paid off. This one's another fairly easy one. There's dog legs to the left. If there's any sort of a stronger wind there, it could push you into those bunkers, but well. When you have a higher amount of control on your hits and more accuracy on your irons, as you level that up, you'll be able to just hit those pretty gosh darn accurately and get on the green too. Granted, I had to spend every moment on my drives thinking about just how close I want to be to the tree and min-maxing my distance. Because by goodness, every, I, ever since I found out about how power shot works, I damn near put that on every single hit that I do. I, I think I barely ever do like a, just a bare hit anymore. But that's something to mention too. On this whole after I did the drive off the tee, I landed over there on like a slope or something like that. 
when you're hitting off of a slope, it changes um, it changes how your ball is going to act in the air. Like you, if you think you're going to hit straight towards the tee, you're not. You're going to hit it offset by a certain amount of degrees, and if it, it'll uh, it'll mess it up pretty badly if you don't ever if you don't notice it quick enough. That happened on uh, Paradise Cove too. And that was a very odd thing to discover. Because uh, I had never thought of that until it happened. I just thought, oh, my accuracy isn't leveled up or anything. No, I'm hitting from an extreme angle. It's, it's going to change something. Calmly hits for another birdie to put him 96 under. And the 16th hole is the uh, is a very risk taker par five because you can skip that entire first area if your drive off the tee is absolutely perfect. Normally, you want to have a wind behind you when you do this, so you can go hit over here and then, you know, smash it onto the fairway. But unfortunately, that's not, that doesn't happen all the time. We've got a wind that's almost pushing back against us. So we've got to plan accordingly. And it's going, and it's going, and it's going in the rough. But this rep is fine, it's light. So we can 80, 90, 90% of our power back. But that, that still means I have to club up and put some power behind it to get onto the green. I've noticed also that when I'm doing my on my backswing and my strokes, I always end up shorting it, shorting it, shorting it to like 90% or something like that. Because right now, I'm just going on my on the feel of how long it takes for the uh, the other uh, backswing to happen, and I'm more focused on the power boost control. That way, I can experiment with how, how much if I can actually go with a naked hit, or if I can just go with a power boost at 50 percent. So I can shore up a 50% into a 75. Or a 98. Let's see if we can get this one in a birdie. That's not too bad. It was it was a two mile an hour wind. So it's essentially a line drive. Right off the tee. Uh oh, those houses didn't render in the background. <laughs> but that's good, that's essentially a straight in. The caddy tip is pretty accurate on that sort of stuff. But you can also be like plus or minus six inches on um whether you want to hit it long or short and you'll be okay. They're more concerned about your left and right. And in the 18th hole, a fitting end to a fittingly, a beautiful end to a fitting of a course like this. We're sitting at 99 under. So at this point I'm questioning myself, you know, I'll get this birdie. And if I get this birdie, it's going to turn out either we're going to sit at 99 or we're going to go to 100. For future reference, probably I could do something like a take a hook off the tee 
and slam it right there, down there to that second area on the fairway to get even closer to the green so I could use something like a sand wedge or a pitching wedge to get me onto the green in two or even use that pitching wedge or whatever to, to hit for a, for a double eagle. It's something like that where you have to be insanely risky to even go for a putt like that. Not, not so much a putt, but a hit like that to get a double eagle. Because that's, that's how you improve a hundred under. It is risky, very risky, very dangerous, and not so, and plays that just don't make sense to anybody besides the person doing them. But then comes the birdie, and then comes the even bigger, the even bigger moment on screen. The win, and also the minus 100. Look at that shit there. Amazing. Thank you for being here for such a momentous occasion here on Cornsfield. I'm Hardcorn, and thanks for stopping on by. And like always, I'll see you next time.